Good morning. I'm out here at the pad 39A with Command Module Pilot Mike Collins. Mike, it was 50 years ago this morning that you and Neil and Buzz headed out here to launch to be the first humans to set foot on the surface of the moon. Well, what thoughts were going through your mind on the way out to the launch pad? Well, you know, as, the mic. as I came out on the launch pad today and got settled and in... Can you hold this, the mic up? Yes, and uh, as, as I came out uh, today and settled into this comfortable chair, I, I, it was a wonderful feeling to be back at uh, launch pad uh, 39A. It was a difference this time. I want to turn and ask uh, Neil a question and maybe t tell Buzz Aldrin something. And, uh, of course, uh, <laughs> I'm here by myself, but uh, at any rate, uh, I know they would enjoy joining in to this sort of a conversation as much as I'm looking forward to it. So, did you find it different coming out for Apollo 11 compared to your Gemini 10 mission? I think the flights of uh, Gemini 10 and Apollo 11 were quite different in one way. Of course, we rode up on a rocket, so that part was very similar, but uh, the Gemini program got a, a lot of publicity, some of it worldwide, but nonetheless it, was, it had more of a local character. Um, it was almost like uh, a celebrity, uh, celebratory sort of event, like a, perhaps an athletic uh, contest, whereas uh, Apollo 11, on the other hand, was, was serious business. We, uh, we crew felt the uh, weight of the world on our shoulders. Uh, we knew that everyone would be looking at us, friend or foe, and we wanted uh, to do the best we possibly could, put our best foot forward, and that required uh, a great deal of uh, work on our uh, part, but n not, not too much uh, time left over for any of the things we might have more enjoyed. Absolutely, so having the weight of the world on your shoulders, I know you guys went through an extensive amount of training. Can you tell us a little bit about the training? What, how did it prepare you for the mission? I think the, uh, the simulators were the heart and soul of our training. Uh, they, they were very uh, good machines. They were excellent uh, duplicators of uh, what we would see uh, in flight. Uh, uh, their one failing was that, uh, that they couldn't duplicate particularly well the view out the window that we saw, but 99% uh, of our work uh, throwing switches and, and communicating with uh, Houston uh, Ninety-nine percent of our work, uh, we, we really didn't need to simulate uh, the, the view out the window that fi with, with, with great fidelity. And so the uh, simulators were very powerful instruments, and uh, we spent a lot of time in them. I think the command module simulator, I spent over 600 hours in it just preparing for Apollo 11 alone. What, what did you find the most challenging? I, I th well, I always think of a, a flight to the moon as being a, a long and fragile daisy chain of events. Uh, uh, links in that chain, certain finite points along the route uh, have names for them like uh, is going faster than escape velocity and uh, slowing down into lunar orbit and so forth. But the point is, uh, no matter how well things are going for you, uh, you can't just relax and pat yourself on the back and say, well, isn't this wonderful? You have to say, okay, I got uh, 17 down. What's number 18 coming up here? I better get on the ball and worry about it. So for me, at least, maybe it might have been different for, from someone else, for someone else, but um, for me, at least, uh, the flight was a... a, a, a question of being under tension, worrying about what's coming next and what do I have to do now to keep this daisy chain intact. So you guys uh, were down here supporting the vehicle processing, you were training in simulators, you spent a lot of time in Florida. Was, was that a challenge for your families and how did the families react to you going to the moon? Well, different families reacted in different ways. Uh, the way it was with uh, my family, with uh, three uh, uh, young uh, uh, children who, who should not be uprooted from their schools. Uh, my wife Pat uh, stayed in uh, Houston and I was by myself here. Some, some uh, crews uh, imported their family from uh, Texas to Florida and that worked out well for them, but uh, we used a different system and it, it worked out very well for us. 
So we had a chance to uh, visit crew quarters this morning, and uh, we were in the, the dining room and the, the rooms where you stayed and the suit room and everything. Did it, did it bring back any memories? How long were you in quarantine before the flight? You know, I don't know how long we were in quarantine before the flight. Uh, you know, quarantine was, was sort of a, a bureaucratic uh, stamp that had been uh, put on some piece of paper. It didn't really change too much uh, our, uh, our, our normal training routine. And uh, I think we were in quarantine maybe two weeks, but, oh, uh, if there's a historian out there, I'm sure he or she will correct that number. Did you get a chance to... Uh to see a, an Apollo Saturn V launch prior to yours? Uh, yes, I did see, uh, I, I saw not uh, an Apollo Saturn, but I saw the uh, first Saturn II launch, 501, and I will always remember it. Uh, we had pretty good seats for that. We were uh, about, I'd say, between two and three miles away, which sounds like forever and a day, but uh, when you're looking at a Saturn V, you, you, you sure, certainly, you, you find out in a big hurry that you're pretty close to it. The thing um, ignites, it takes off, it's very, very quietly, uh, starts ascending, and, uh, and you look out across the lagoon and you say, well, it's not a big deal. Uh, I've seen rockets go off before. And it, uh, then it starts going up and picks up speed, going faster. It looks a little bit more impressive, but still no, nothing very exceptional and then the shock wave from the uh, rocket power hits you hits you in the viscera your whole body is shaking your feet underneath you are shaking in the mud uh, and um, you think my god is this is what they mean by power uh, this is uh, gives you an entirely different feeling a different concept of what power really means so you have to be there and, and have your belly shake before you can really evaluate a, a Saturn V. So did you get a chance to strap into the vehicle in practice before you actually launched? I mean, the first time you strapped in, that wasn't the first time. No, no, no I don't think so. I think we'd been inside the, the vehicle uh, quite a number of times for, I mean, going way back, uh, our command module, uh, 107, I had nursed it through the uh, assembly process in uh, California. And uh, so it and I were old friends, and uh, then I, uh, very graciously, I invited uh, Neil and Buzz to come aboard under certain circumstances that I was going to be the czar of the uh, trio. But I invited them in, and then we uh, had various exercises uh, that uh, prepared us to do our separate duties after launch. I think we're going to get a video here, and we're coming up on the exact time of launch, and let's, let's take a look at this video that's coming up. Uh, we've accomplished a successful mission if we land men on the moon and return them safely. I believe that uh, is the primary 20 mission seconds and uh, as dated. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. Main engine Six, start. We have five, main engine start. Four, three, two, one. one. Apollo 11 was about exploration, about taking risks for great rewards in science and engineering, about setting an ambitious goal before the world. We find for the first time that, that man has a the flexibility or the option of uh, either walking this planet or some other planet, be it uh, the moon or Mars or I don't know where. And I'm fairly, fairly equipped to uh, evaluate uh, where that may lead us to. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. The, the highlight for, for those of us uh, in the limb uh, will probably be a successful touchdown. Uh, I, I really look forward to that uh, the most this time. Uh, 
So, Mike, does that bring back any uh, any memories? You talked about what it was like watching a Saturn V launch. What did it feel like to ride that rocket? The feeling on board uh, a Saturn V uh, after engine ignition is quite different than what you might imagine. Uh, uh, if you if you watch it f uh, from a distance, it makes a stately ascent, and uh, you're quite aware of the gigantic uh, power it is producing, seven and a half million pounds of thrust. But inside, it's a different situation. Um, uh, inside, uh, you're not worried about your power so much as you're worried about your steering, and uh, you're, uh, you're you're suspended uh, inside uh, the cockpit, uh, not too far away from that launch umbilical tower that's right off to one side. As you lift off, uh, if there's any imbalance, uh, it's compensated for by the uh, swiveling of your motors below you. You have five uh, engines down there, and as you ascend, very slowly, majestically, inside. It's a different situation. You feel jiggling left to right, and uh, you're not quite sure whether those jiggles are as big or small as they should be, or how much closer they're going to put you to that launch umbilical tower, which you do not very much want to hit right that moment. So it's a totally uh, different feeling at liftoff. Uh, um, the, the, the nervous novice driving a wide vehicle down a narrow alley, and then once you clear the tower and things smooth out a bit, you pick up speed, then it becomes more like you might imagine uh, watching it from afar. You're, you're more conscious of the uh, gigantic amount of power below you. You're more conscious of the acceleration and the speed that you're picking up, and, and then you... Uh, soon find out that uh, your uh, your machine, your, your Saturn, breaks apart into pieces. Uh, when it's finished with piece number one, uh, jettisons uh, it, and uh, that gives you a, a momentary skyrocket inside the cockpit. The cockpit is immediately full of, of uh, not, not any fire or flames, but the vision, the idea, <coughs> the, the sight of... Uh, yeah being surrounded by fire, then it's, when it gets through that little hiccup, uh, from then on it's a quieter, uh, more rational, silent ride all the way to the moon. What did it feel like when that second stage lit? Was that a pretty good kick? Second stage was a stage that we had worried about somewhat during its, uh, its uh, birth and, and genesis. Uh, uh, they had some, uh, the designers and the engineers had had some difficulties with the second stage, and we were a little bit leery about how ready was this second stage uh, for manned flight. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, it was perfect, smooth as glass, uh, much uh, smoother than either the first or the third stage, and uh, so it was, it was our friend that day.